Hi, welcome to Dear Art Producer. I am your host, Heather Elder, and today is October 5th, and it's a first for our show. We're joined by two guests, Robin Swirk and Pete Anderson from Freshworks. Robin, as Senior Creative Program Manager, orchestrates creative programs at Freshworks, collaborating with the creative, brand and web strategy, and content and social teams to ensure quality and efficiency. Outside work, she's passionate about the outdoors and culinary adventures. Pete, the global video lead based in Seattle, boasts a rich history in production from his early days at Mechanics in Seattle to the leadership roles at Publicis in the West and Cole Weber. At PBN, he showcased work that merged the roles of creator and producer. And an avid talent scout, Pete thrives on creating impactful work regardless of budget. I'm not sure where he finds the time, though, as he has five teenagers. A warm welcome to both Robin and Pete. Hello. Hello. Thank you for Hi, having us. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. And what our listeners don't know is that we just completed a shoot together. And it's so exciting to think about being able to interview both of you after a wonderful shoot with Doug Manue. Of course, we haven't seen any of the images yet, but I'm excited to do so when, when they come across my desk. So thank you for that. Okay. So I'd love to kind of get started just exploring the two different roles that you have. Robin, why don't we start with you and you can explain a little bit about what a senior creative program manager does. Sure. I sit on the brand creative team and I manage all of the projects that come our way that anyone at the company might need support on. So all projects come to me, I review them, figure out if we're going to do them, who's going to do them and, you know, put together the right team to produce the work, whether it's, you know, based on who we're supporting or what type of project it is. Most of the time, our projects are in support of stakeholders, mostly in the marketing department, sometimes HR, sometimes sales. And then there's some internal projects that we work on to evolve our brand or build out our brand libraries, such as this project that we worked on that I then kind of program manage from start to finish. You're busy. (laughs) Yes, I am busy. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Okay. How about you, Pete? You're the global video lead. And what does that mean? And how do you, how do your roles, you know, complement each other maybe as well? Add that in there. Yeah. My, my role is, so I, I was brought in to kind of strengthen the video production and creative from internal. So that's, that is part of the, the gig. But what I've, I've brought to Freshworks and then to the, the brand side of things is, Partnering with outside agencies, partnering with production companies, and really bringing kind of that that knowledge base that I had from working at ad agencies my whole career, and bringing that into the team. So it's developed more into a, I'd say, overall production, and that's where I think where Robin and I cross paths is on multiple types of jobs, whether it's digital, photography, video. We are working closely every single day. We're able to look at what each other's doing and help each other out as as much as we can. And what's the workflow like? Do you feel like there's like a constant flow of projects that are coming your way? Or is it just so like having the two of you kind of you know, complement each other really helps out in that situation or just it, does it kind of come in waves? I'll start and I'll let Robin add. Robin is kind of the the main go-to. Like whenever there's an assignment that comes in or a job that that comes my way, um, 80 to 90% of the time, Robin knows about it. And that's not that's just the video side of things. And then, you know, there's an, an enormous amount of other projects that, that come in that I won't even be privy to, but I would say Robin sees all. Would you agree, Robin? I would agree. I would agree. And it comes in handy because, you know, there are projects where something will come in for the video team to work on, but I know that it's connected to something bigger or something else, or it's part of an event. And if Pete only sees the video, he doesn't know that it's part of something bigger, whereas I can connect those dots. So I try to bring the teams together and then figure out who should collaborate with whom if it kind of crosses over from team to team. So what are you both known for on your team? Robin, let's start with you. I guess I'm known for knowing all. Like I know what every (laughs) single person on the team is working on at any moment. I know who are the people that we support. I sort of 
like I have that very high level overview of everything that's going on. And then the other thing is just doing every single thing that I can to make everyone else's lives easier. I don't want them to worry about the what goes into like all the background noise. I want the video people and the designers and the people who have that very special skill set to focus on what they're good at and let me worry about everything else. And how about you, Pete? I think being known for uh, one, just the video, the video side of things, there, there wasn't really anyone that had that, that role, or if there was, it was just kind of lost in translation or wasn't paid enough attention to this Freshworks has done video after video after video over the last, you know, three to five years. And I was trying to come in and help stabilize why we're doing what we're doing. And then also, you know, getting, we're, we're starting to do more shoots internally. So, you know, building a team that can bring all of that, not only just the, the edit and the animation, but also, you know, going out and, and shooting for, you know, different types of projects. So I think that's what I was known for, for coming in. And then I think now I get utilized and asked for, for you know, different projects like like this photo shoot for example it's like i bring my my knowledge to what the project is you know being able to reach out to you guys and see who who would be a great fit for this project so i, I bring that type of skill set to this this group so it's you know it's second nature for me but it's something that i don't think we actually had within our brand group and what percentage of your projects do you think are photography only or motion only or are they more a combination of the two i'm gonna let robin answer that because she has a because she's all knowing exactly <laughs> yeah so you know obviously all the projects that go over to pete are all photography or video the stuff that like i really have a hand in we don't do the photo shoots but we use we utilize the photography and that's almost in everything we do. So it goes up on our event booths. It goes in our campaigns, our collateral, our presentations. So knowing, you know, our brand, our library of images and what should be used where and kind of having a handle on that, like it gets used in, in almost every single project that we work on. It sounds like you're doing like a lot of different photography and motion projects throughout the year. Yeah. We are. That's yeah. Great. And a lot of the photography so, is, you know, taking pictures of internal events or customer events. So mm -hmm. it's kind of doing live event photography and then this photo shoot that we did and then utilizing it across all of our projects. So when a project is motion forward, Pete, do you tend to call a photographer first or do you call a director? Do you prefer to work with a production company or do you prefer to work with independent artists? I think it varies. It, it depends on what the what the need is. And once I can see what, what that project is about, I know who I want to reach out to. So like, for example, I've, I've brought in a independent DP to, to do some filming for us. I've worked with production companies for maybe some ad like objects or something a little bit more creative that, that we need and we don't have internally. So it, it really ranges from from what the project's going to be. Like the, the photo shoot we just did with Doug, we don't have a presence in the U.S. on our team that can handle photography and do a shoot like this internally, right? But in Chennai, where our headquarters is, we have a full team of video and photographers on staff. So they were able to handle the internal employee shoot there. Oh, interesting. Okay, so let me ask you a question about marketing to you both then. You know, when artists are looking to get their work in front of you, how are they connecting with you right now? For me, it's if it's like a, a cold reach out, it's directly through email or LinkedIn. If it's people that I've been in contact with and have just known over the years, they know how to reach out to me. If there's, you know, something new they want to share or since I've only been in this role a year, I'm I'm starting to catch up with some of those folks that I I kind of left coming from the agency side. It's mostly just through email, unless I'm really close with them. Then it then it 
it can come through, you know, a variety of ways. Is that the same for you, Robin? Yeah, I would say email, but I I don't get as many and maybe it's my role. You know, if I'm found on LinkedIn, it, it can be a little confusing what my role internal program manager at a tech mm-hmm. company. So I I think I just rely on if we needed someone, I would rely on Pete and then I would help him with the project versus kind of finding the right people on my own. Are there any common mistakes or pitfalls that artists tend to make when they're trying to get your attention, Pete? The hard part is standing out. You know, you when you get so many reach out, it's really, it's like, why are you different than the other artists? For me, I tend to utilize the same group of folks that I know and trust and know, know that I can get a good, um, good return. Like it, it made sense for me to reach out to you guys for this shoot, because I knew you had three or four photographers that could take on this type of job. And, you know, and I, and I trust and know the the professionalism you guys have, but for other artists, I think it, it, it is kind of hard to, to get in, especially like a place like Freshworks that who is that right person? You wouldn't think by looking at my, my title that, that, you know, a photographer would necessarily send me their information based on its global video, right? So that that's a little misleading as well. But I, I think for me, if I'm going to notice, it's got to be right in front of me. You know, if you're going to send out a, a an email, like if it's made a little bit l- more, you know, towards me, there's chances are I'm, I'm going to look at it. If not, you know, some of it gets stuck in the spam and Some of it I just don't get to, but I think, yeah, anytime you can make a splash with something like right in front of my eyes for that split second, that'll make a difference to me. Yeah, it's so interesting thinking about that because it's a common answer, right? Like, how do you stand out? How do you be unique? And timing. So it's two things. It has to be, you have to have something that is really different and that speaks to you. And it has to hit your inbox at the right time. And I I think that's like a golden combination. It's a bit of a lottery ticket for those of us on the other end who are trying to get your attention. So I would, you know, I as a rep would say to people out there, like, you know, don't get frustrated, just keep trying and, you know, keep shooting and keep trying to push your work so that it does stand out and it does feel a little bit different than what everybody else is doing. Totally agree. And, you know, I do miss these, but I love the portfolio showings, right? Like back in the day and in looking at books and getting to know the people that, you know, that's how we, we've met back in the mm-hmm. day. And, you know, those don't happen anymore, right? Like there's not as many or a lot of us are working from home. So there's, there's no opportunity for that. So it is difficult. Do you guys ever do a portfolio, like virtual portfolio shows that maybe Robin and her team would come to and your team would go to and... Or do you just kind of rely on what you know and the channels that are in place to reach you already? You know, I've never had one of those. And that actually sounds really enticing for this group because I don't know that our group is necessarily seen like, okay, so what can Heather Elder reps, what, what, who do they have? What do they do besides rep photographers? And I, I think that would actually go a long way because that sticks in people's mind of like, Oh, remember that photographer's book that we looked at? They would be perfect for this. So I, I think doing more things like that not only would be good for us to see that the different types of creativity are, that are out there, but it it would be great for you guys too. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I'm sure lots of people listening are going to be emailing you now. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it might even inspire projects. Like I remember, I got I think it was your newsletter or your blog, Heather, that it came to my email, and I remember seeing it was a recent one, and it was big blocks of color. It was an ad campaign, and like the walls that the models were standing in front of were these big bold colors. And oh yeah, right. And and our whole like kind of brand motto is big and bold. And I forwarded it to one of our creative directors, and I was like, look, like this speaks to us like this is our brand like maybe we should think about incorporating something like this into what we're already doing so it might even inspire something that we never would have even thought of yeah no that's great i think that was for loop and hammock and for pete's yes and uh, okay so 
I love hearing that because that you just proved my, what I just said earlier. It's like that, you know, golden Mm -hmm. lottery ticket of it was something that like was relevant and it stuck out to you and the timing was right. Right. And you forwarded it along. Yeah. So I also think another thing that's really interesting about what you just said there is when we had portfolio shows or you, I'm going to totally date myself, people would even call portfolios in and I would have to FedEx them to them. I knew when people were engaged with the work. I knew when people were paying attention to something and when it was resonating with them. Now, because it is so much email and occasionally we're, I am doing some virtual shows for sure. And I am seeing people in person, but it's more on a social level. You looked at my email blast and you forwarded it to someone, but I don't really know that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess I, I can look at my open rates and I could click on it and see that you did that, but that's a bit stalkerish. And I'm not going to yeah. email you and be like, Hey, I saw that you worked at it. What was cool about it to you? Like no one's really, no one should do that. Please don't do that. Anyone. Sure. But I lo- I lo- in the past, you might have seen some work and then called me and asked to see the portfolio. Mm-hmm. So it's really interesting how much information we don't have at our fingertips. Until you call me for an estimate, I really don't know that you've engaged with the work or not. So, you know, we're really missing that, that part of our, you know, interaction with you guys as well. Absolutely. It is back a little bit. I definitely have been invited to come to some agencies to, to show the work, but it's, very few people are showing up and the, the, the photographers rightfully so. And the directors, they're just not really keeping up with their portfolios in terms of the printed version as much because it's expensive and we're not doing it as much. So I'm keeping up with my group portfolio, which I think has been, you know, a nice change. And then I do a little bit of a different presentation, which is also interesting, but I'm with you, Pete. And I, I miss that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would like the in-person website to, to go meet and talk through the different, you know, photographers that you have. I, I, I do miss that quite a bit because I do think it, it does bring excitement um, versus just looking at something on a screen. Yeah, I agree with that. Especially the, the printed portfolio, right? It was so beautiful to see it there in front of you. So let's, let's keep on the process of like reviewing talent. You know, when you are collecting talent for a project, and I know you said you go to the people that you know or the reps that you know. And how do you share that information with your team? Are you sharing links of websites? Are you trying to share projects with them? Are you taking screenshots of images that you think are relevant and you're curating it so that your team just sees the the imagery that is most relevant? How do you present the work to the people on your team that you want to buy into that person, that artist? Well, it, it depends on the project. Like for this this one in particular that we worked with Doug on, there there was a kind of a group of us that were gonna make the final decision on it. And so what I did is I, I went out and collected a variety of photographers that I think that could take this job on. Some were local to the Denver area, some were just some photographers that I had worked with in the past. And then others were ones that that I found or uh, reached out and asked who would be good for this. And so then we we kind of I shared those different photographers in no particular order, so no one like I didn't want to rank them. And we just kind of talked through their portfolios and what they liked about each. And then it was it was kind of great to to hear that like uh, live feedback because I didn't want to just send and be like, okay, fine. Who do you like? And it, it did take some time for us to, to whittle down to where we were in a good spot to choose because there are a variety of, of different things. But it did feel a little bit like the old days when we'd sit around and, and look at portfolios together. So that that was actually kind of nice. Robin, yeah. were you in that process or do you come in it at a different point? No, I, I was there. So yeah, it did feel like we were in the, our, our small team. We meet um, every day. And so we took one of those days, Pete shared his screen. So we were all looking at the same picture at the same time at the same photographer and going through it. So it was as if we were in the same room and we were doing it together in real time. And then people would, you know, make comments, ask questions, wait, go back to that one, you know, that sort of thing. So it kind of brought that old world in office feeling to this project. That's really great to hear. I think a lot of us imagine at least from where I sit, I get an, I, sometimes I get an email, hey, we're looking for somebody for this type of project. And 
you know, send me links and then I'll just send a bunch of links. And it feels a little random because a lot of times I'm not given like very clear specs or like visual references. So I'm just sharing links with people. So I'm imagining them, you know, gathering all the links and then just shooting them off to their creatives or to whoever's on their team to look at it. And then they're like clicking through it and, you know, and then we don't hear back. So it's really nice to have this visual now of actually, maybe when I'm sending along the links, you are all there talking about it and l- looking at them closely and and reviewing it together. Yeah. I think it's really important because just sending things and say to pick one, you know, that doesn't do the work any justice to. I, I'd rather spend, you know, even if it's 15 minutes talking about why, I think that goes a long way. So is there anything on a website that would be helpful, you know, that you gravitate to as features on a site that when you're reviewing? I don't know. Like, I always like to see their their favorite work mm-hmm. uh, up front versus what I might like to see or like even if it's their personal work i I still like seeing that because it gives me an idea of what they can do and it you know that that's it it's what attracts me to it because it's like i may look at a photographer uh an editor and it may not be right for for what i'm liking but if i like it enough i'll dig enough and so to me it's it's putting that forward versus seeing something and being like oh that's not very good but then come to find out that Oh no, they can really do this type of subject really well, but I, I don't see it. But I also have different tastes than the next person, right? So it all depends. But I, I've always thought that if, you know, as an artist, if you put your your favorite work out front, then I think that goes a long way. Yeah, I agree. Would you agree with that, Robin? Yeah, definitely. Because we're at a corporate company, so if I'm only looking at what people can do like pictures, I'm not seeing the true breadth of what a photographer can do versus, again, putting the variety, their favorites, everything that they've done out there first, you you get a more in-depth look at, you know, what they can do. Yeah. No, that's a really great, important point. So is there anything that consistently stands out as reasons that your team may choose a photographer or director to bid? Not, I'm not talking about to, to award a job to them, but, and maybe they're the same reasons, but when you're like narrowing down that list, what are the things that kind of rise to the top? Let's start with you, Robin. I know I wasn't really, even though I was part of the process when we were looking at all the photographers, I wasn't part of the kind of reach out. But what I did really like about Doug was that he had done his, in our first conversation when we, when we awarded him the project, is he had really done his research. It felt like he was coming to the table with more knowledge about Freshworks than I had. And I was like, oh, wow, where did he find that? That's great. But I really felt like he wanted to get to know who we were so he knew how to and where to involve himself. So I appreciated that. How about you, Pete? Yeah, that that's actually a really good point because I don't like to go through a, a ton of like putting together like full treatments and doing all that. But I guess it would depend on what the budget is and how big that the job was. But for something like this that we wanted to do for an internal like employee shoot, it, I didn't necessarily ask for that. It's like okay, I, I I know Doug can handle this. He's he shows projects that he's done in the past that definitely fit this bill. So I didn't ask for that. But what we got back was a really in-depth reason as to why he wanted this. And it that that to me was was amazing. And I'm I'm so glad it it worked out because I that can go a long way, right? Looking into that. But I do appreciate somebody that can go just that little bit extra, like, okay, yeah, I know this person would be good. And then that's all they send. I'd love to have that like. And here's why. I, I think that also goes a long way because it can separate you from the next person, right? Like if you show that interest, you show that excitement. I completely agree with that, especially given how many artists there are out there. You have a lot of talented people to choose from, right? So, and a lot of people, you know, even I say this a lot, but the lifestyle spectrum spectrum alone is enormous. So if you need lifestyle photography and you choose three, you're going to have three really amazing choices, right? Because you've started yeah. from a very large pool of people. Well, what's going to make them stand out? 
you know, what is the thing that only they can say about themselves that they're going to bring to set with them that no one else can. And I think that's a hard thing to figure out, but I think it can be figured out. And once you know what that is, you know, and maybe for, you know, Doug on this particular shoot, it was his superpower. You know, the idea that he, his superpower was really digging into your, your culture at your company and understanding it. And that was meaningful to you. And I, I just think that's, I am totally agreeing with you. I think that's really important. Okay. Let's, let's talk about the creative call a little bit. Do you have, I mean, it's so obvious it's a really important part of this process. You've just said that, you know, on this particular shoot, Doug rose to the top there. What are some things that people can do wrong on a, on a creative call that they don't realize is off-putting? I think it's really, it's not understanding what we're trying to accomplish, like coming into it like a little bit cold. Uh, you know, that, that happens quite often, like whether it's not taking the time or, or even putting in the, the effort, just thinking that they're, they're going to get this project. I think that to me is the, the biggest letdown, I guess you could say, or, you know, if there, you, you put together a bid for a job and it's like, okay, you didn't listen to what we really wanted. We don't, we don't need that, but we do need this. I would say it's those, those two things. So it's really understanding what the, what the brief is. And, and if we didn't provide enough information, then maybe ask those questions prior to getting on. So we can at least put you guys in the right position to succeed with it. And who writes the brief or like project manages the brief? Is that you, Robin? Is that your team? I think in this case, it was sort of a combination. We had done the Chennai photo shoot. So we sort of took learnings from that one and kind of what was put together just internally for that shoot and then and then built on it. And it was, I think the person who led it was one of our art directors, one of the, you know, the leads on our team. I think it was Lucy, right? Mm -hmm. that, that kind of mm -hmm. spearheaded so she kind of took everything that we did in the Chennai photo shoot, everything that we sort of built in our brand guidelines on what our approach to photography is, and then what was missing. What do we need out of this photo shoot? Why are we doing this photo shoot? So she sort of like put it all together and then and then we all kind of chimed in, but she, she spearheaded it. So when you share the scope with an artist, are you also sharing budgets with them at that time if you have them? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Are they hard to get? Do you normally have them or? Yeah, we, we knew, we knew going into this, what we had to spend. It was kind of, yeah, this time, I mean, sometimes budgets are hard, but this time we actually knew. From where I am, a lot of times we get the budget. I feel like maybe 25% of the time we don't get the budget. And when we don't get the budget, it's usually with a client we haven't worked with before. And it's usually, because they, they might know it or have kind of an idea or they're trying to get trying to get a budget out of their client. And it just makes it really much more difficult because there's so many different ways to produce a job. And if they don't have a money, enough money from the beginning, it makes it really challenging to help them sell it into their client and come up with a good strategy for the shoot. So knowing the budget is really helpful. So Thank you for that. <laughs> How about usage? Does that come up in where in the conversation does that come up with you and your team? Uh, <laughs> that's tough because it's depending on what the, the shoot is, but that came up a little bit later on this one than I'm. And that was just strictly me not having that conversation with, let's say like Robin and being like, okay, so we're going to use this for maybe the next year. And then after that, maybe a little bit more. So maybe we do two years for this. And it's like, well, why don't we do a full buyout? And it's like, oh, well, we don't need a full buyout because we're shooting employees and employees leave and we'll need to update. And so that happened a little bit later that, you know, I think that discussion could have been had by Robin and I earlier, earlier on in the, in the process when putting that together. Cause that's, that's kind of one of the things you, at least I don't necessarily think about right away. You know, you're thinking about the work and, and the photographer and what you're going to get. And then there's the, the usage part. So I think that, you know, I just, sometimes I'll just answer it without even talking to 
to someone like Robin to get an opinion on that. And then sometimes that can get me into trouble. Uh, <laughs> but this time, luckily, Robin a a agreed with me. <laughs> yeah. Do you have anything to add to that, Robin? No, I mean, yeah, this is something I would never have even thought about. You know, in my mind, I'm like, oh, they take pictures for us and then we get to keep them. So it was good to have somebody like Pete who has experience in this, but yeah. also exactly like using employees, employees leave and no one wants to use employees who have left the company still, you know, let's not use a employee who left in a recruiting campaign. So that did make the answer a little bit easier. I'm going to send you when we're done a link to the Artist Man Management Association's usage glossary. It's super helpful. And a lot of great agents around the country worked on it. And we're constantly updating it. And you can easily have access to it. So it'd be a really great resource for you. So I'll send you the link. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. So when it comes time to awarding a job to somebody, do you feel like it's pretty obvious who's going to get it at the time? Or are you still kind of, you know, down to the wire having conversations about it? I'm generally a little bit down to the wire. Like my, my hope is that I make it difficult for the, the team, whether that's the creatives or like our, our group. I want to make it hard to choose from because I think there are so many good options out there. You know, there I may go in with like, this is who I want, but I'm not going to use that because I don't want that to sway one way or another because I, I want it to be a decision we, we make together. Um, but, the, you know, sometimes it just happens to, like, oh, nope, they're they stand above everybody else. And then, you know, that obviously makes it, it easier on on my end to to share that information. But I. If I had it, I, I want it to be hard. Right? Oh, I, I like that point of view. I haven't heard that answer yet. And I really like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to use that if you don't mind. <laughs> Please do. So what's the process like at Freshworks when, some, when you have to let someone know they didn't get a job? You know, it, it's one of those things where I follow up with an email and, you know, offer to have conversation ab about why. And sometimes that's taken up. Sometimes that's not. If it's somebody that I know, I, I generally will pick up the phone and, and have that conversation. You know, it also depends on what the project is too, right? If it's a, a smaller project that was like a, a wishful thinking type of thing, then, you know, sometimes that's just fine with, with an email and I think that's accepted. But I also like to be able to have that conversation as to why if they so choose. Yeah, so that's really generous of you. I think a lot of times people, if we hear, you know, a lot of times we don't hear. And when we do hear, sometimes it's just a, oh, sorry, we went another direction, which falls a little flat, I think, because there's so much time and effort and work put into it. It would be great to to be able to learn something from the process. So thank you for that. If, you know, you're putting that extra bit of time in, especially once you award a job, we know how fast things move. So for you to spend a little bit of time for the other artist or two who didn't get awarded the job. Well, you know, that's great. You know, I think so much of this and, and what we do and, and why it works is having relationships, right? And I don't want to sour a relationship with someone by being cold to, to them if they didn't get it. I mean, I think that, you know, back in the agency days of if pitching business, it's you, you know, why, why didn't we win that pitch? Like, so we can strengthen certain places. So I'm always more than happy to, to share. And sometimes it is, they just like the other photographer better. Yeah. Like, and yeah. and that's so true. Like, I really believe that like, sometimes there's not really a good answer and there might not be something you can learn. It's just something in the other treatment or the other bid or the other creative call just spoke to that person, you know? Yeah. Okay, well, we're kind of winding down here, and I'd love to get your both of your predictions for the rest of 2023. Do you see the end of the year being busy and with projects, or do you see it kind of, you know, you just kind of coasting through to the end? Definitely busy with projects. <laughs> I feel like we never coast at Freshworks. There's always <laughs> But I definitely want to do, I want to ramp up 
these photo shoots and do more of these. I want these to become more of what we do. So I'm going to do the legwork to ramp up on, on the fun projects. Oh, that's great. Awesome. I like hearing that. That's really good. What about you, Pete? Do you feel the same way? Yeah. I, I, we're, you know, we're, we are always busy and that's just the, the nature of it. But, you know, I do second what Robin is saying. I think not only photo shoots, but just the, the work in general and just trying to make it, it better in, mm-hmm. in all the spots we can. And if that means, you know, we're bringing in production companies, photographers, agencies, what, what have you, I, I think she's got the, the right point. It's like, once you, you get that taste, you're kind of like, I want to do more of that. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's figuring out how to, how to make that happen. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, good. Well, I cannot believe that the end of the year is fast approaching. It is crazy, but I love your prediction. So, and the positivity, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. I usually end the podcast asking everybody what their favorite thing to do is on a Sunday and what, if they weren't producers, what they would be. So Robin, why don't we start with you? What's your favorite thing to do on a Sunday? Okay. So if it's the winter time, I would probably be snowboarding. Summertime, if it's not too hot, hiking, something out on a lake, outdoors with friends, kind of being active, but being social at the same time. And if I wasn't doing what I'm doing, my dream, dream job would be to uh, travel around sourcing really cool items from local artists and then having a store in some small town and then selling them, just kind of being a Oh my God. Okay. Shop Tell worker. me when you would do that. Cause I'll come visit. <laughs> no, sounds great. <laughs> I know. Really? That is my, that's my goal. So, which is really funny because when I was in elementary school, my mom owned a shop and she only owned it for a couple of years, but it was like, you know, it was like a gift shop. And it's just funny that looking back, I'm like, wait, that's now what I want to do. I wish she still had it. It feels familiar to you. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So how about you, Pete? Oh, Sundays, Sundays, Sundays. I love Sundays. They're, they're the, the best day. I just wish we didn't have to work on Mondays. But. <laughs> Sundays for me are it, it's football. I, I, I'm a season ticket holder to the Seahawks. So it, it's, it's all, football. it's all football. Yeah. And then during when it's nice outside, though, I will be outside in my yard at all times. Uh, so it's one of the two things. And one thing we didn't touch on, Pete, is that you have five teenagers. I meant to bring that up earlier when I said it and I spaced. Yes. Yes. I was just recently married and my wife has two teenage sons and I have two teenage sons and a teenage daughter and two are in college and three are living at home with us. So it, yeah, we're, uh, we're busy. You are busy. So your Sundays must be, yeah, you must try and keep those for yourself. I'm sure. <laughs> yes, we do. Okay. And if you weren't a producer, what would you be? Well, what's really funny is I'm very close to what Robin's saying, not the traveling portion, but I would, I would definitely have a plant shop. <gasps> I, I'm big into, uh, to, to flowers and plants and love talking about them and love, you know, seeing people happy with it, with a, a plant purchase. Oh, that's um, awesome. He, we can go into business together. <laughs> I can be like two sided. This is, I I can source all the, the pots and everything and the vases and you could do the plants and the flowers. <laughs> I would like to tell you both that of, I have asked this question. We are, I think you guys are episode 101 or 102 here. And I've never had an answer like your two. No one has ever said open a shop, nor have they said a plant shop. So unique. That's good. Yeah, I love it. Well, you guys, thank you so much for being with me here today. It was really interesting to hear about how Freshworks works and how the two of you complement each other in your roles and your predictions for sure for 2023, the rest of it. So thank you for that. And I'm sure our paths will cross again. 